السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We commence in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We declare the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We thank him upon all conditions We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every form of goodness And we seek protection from every form of evil Amin. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, yesterday, alhamdulillah, we saw how Sulaiman alayhi salatu was salam was gifted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything he related it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was concerned even, even about the smallest creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala such as the ant. This evening inshallah we are moving through Surah An-Naml that is the 27th Surah of the Quran and I would like to draw your attention to a very interesting point of this particular surah. At the beginning of the 20th part of the Quran, when I say the 20th part, I'm talking of the parts from 30 parts. So the ajza or the juz. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of some of the creatures of his. From among these creatures, he makes mention of the clouds, the water that comes from the skies. So he says... وَأَنزَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً And he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has sent down for you from the heavens water. If you take a look at the water, I want to draw your attention to the fact that it is made up of very, very small particles. All together, it becomes water that you can see. If they were separated, they would have evaporated. The fact that they are all together is what gives them the power. It makes it liquid and that is when it gets to us and that is when we benefit from it. Just bear that point in mind. Then the next thing Allah says, <clears throat> So as a result of that rain, Allah causes to grow the plush gardens, hadaiq, so many beautiful gardens. These gardens are very interesting because a garden is not made up of one rose, but rather it is made up of many roses, many flowers, many trees, many fruit trees perhaps. This is what makes up a garden. A garden is not one particular plant. It is so many things put together. Remember with the water, lots of water particles put together gives you the water. One would evaporate. With the, with the garden, lots of plants put together and lots of flowers etc put together gives you the garden one is not really a garden okay bear that point in mind then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 61 of surah al-naml he says he's talking about what he has created so the point I want to raise through the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says Allah has created the rivers what is a river made of water what is the water of? So many particles, subhanallah. And that's when you have the river. Without all those particles coming together, you would never have a river because the water would have been evaporated. And then Allah says he has created the mountains. What is a mountain made of? It is made of particles. Particles of what? Sand, dust, stone, etc. These come together, subhanallah. And with these beautiful particles, what you will notice is an entire mountain is made. Now, why am I saying all of this? Because my brothers, my sisters, what we need to, need to know is we already saw how united the ants were and they achieved protection. Take a look at how united the other creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are. When they are together, they are a force to be reckoned with. When they are separated, they will be blown by the window, evaporated. Subhanallah. The lesson I want to draw is mankind is quite similar. Together we make an ummah that is powerful. But when we are disunited and when we are fragmented, we are blown by the wind and we are evaporated. So that's the point I want to raise. We save ourselves from losing our power. Like Allah says, وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ Do not dispute with one, with one another. 
Do not argue and dispute with one another because you will be unsuccessful and you will lose your might as an ummah. I hope we understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. So the point of saving ourselves is to actually save ourselves from disunity and from being fragmented such that there is no power remaining in the entire ummah. We are meaningless. Even in a home, it is not easy to unite. You know, if you look at the sand particles, they fit next to each other. They don't complain that this one is too big, this one is too small. They fit. They find their place and they squeeze through. You take sand into a little uh, container, you shake it a little bit, and they find their way through where there is a bit of gap. They make it there. Why is it that mankind cannot do this? We don't get along with each other. We cannot adjust to live with one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to adjust so that we can appreciate one another and we can live with one another. So this is something extremely important. Now, also in these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is drawing our attention to calling out to him. He is the one. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, it, is it not he who responds to the one who is desperate when he calls out to him? That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I respond to he who is desperate when he calls out to me. So keep calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. There are so many examples of people who have called out to Allah in desperation. And Allah has given them what they've asked for. Never lose hope. Allah knows the timing. Some of us make a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We call out to him. We become impatient. Because we want it according to our plan. But Allah knows. He knows the future. He knows what it holds for us. He knows whether what we are asking for is actually good for us or not. So for that reason, he holds it back. He either gives it to us at the right time or he replaces it with something better for us. And this is the gift of Allah for us. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, because of my knowledge of the future, because of my knowledge of everything, I will give you what is right. Even though you may have asked me for something else, if I know it's wrong for you, through my mercy, I will keep it away from you. And one day you will understand why. One day you will understand why. And this is why we should never be impatient when it comes to the answering of the dua that we have made, yustajabu li ahadikum ma lam yastajil. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, your dua will be answered for as long as you do not make haste. So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum asked, what is the meaning of making haste, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He says quite clearly, one of you saying, da'awtu falam yustajab li. I have called out to Allah, but he is not answering me. So he says, that means you're making haste. Allah heard you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearing indeed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Then at the end of Surah An-Naml, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the importance of preserving the deeds that you engage in while you are on earth. But the wording is very different. So how does he say this? One is to do your deed. Tonight, we have read Salatul Isha, Salatul Taraweeh. May Allah accept it from us. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. But whether or not I will still be having the Salah with me when I meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a totally different issue. Because between now and then, if I have wronged someone, if I have perpetrated a crime against someone, perhaps that Salah will be taken as a payment to be given to that person. When I come on the Day of Judgment, it's not there. Where did it go? Well, you know, you did wrong to this guy. So Allah took it and gave it to him. We don't want that to happen. So to preserve what you've done in terms of acts of worship is perhaps 10 times more difficult than the act itself. It's easy for me to abstain from food and drink and fast. But for me to thereafter respect the others and fulfill their rights so that I don't lose that fast to them is a bigger deal. Remember this. This goes back to the hadith I've made mention of several times. Al-Muflis, the hadith of the bankrupt person. We remember this. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 89 of Surah An-Naml, as well as several other places in the Quran, similar verses. Whoever comes on the day of judgment with a good deed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will recompense them with that which is better. 
than what they've come with. And they will be safeguarded from the tremor of the day, the fear of that particular day, the, the harshness of that particular day. Allah says, if you have done the deed and you were so concerned about preserving it, you definitely deserve that we give you back tenfold and more. Whatever we wish, we are going to give you definitely better than what you did. So if you spent time for the sake of Allah doing good deeds and thereafter you looked after the good deeds by not harming others, Allah says, we will give you. So let's save our deeds from being lost by fulfilling the rights of others so that those deeds are not lost to the other people. Ameen, ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. I want to move on to the next surah, which is Surah Al-Qasas. And Surah Al-Qasas is a very, very interesting surah because it has in it the details, the biggest detail, the deepest detail of the story of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. But we have already covered a lot of the story, so I'm only going to go through the parts perhaps that we have not yet covered. Right at the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how the Pharaoh and his wife, who did not have children, they were looking for children and so on. Allah makes mention of how Musa alayhi salam was born and the Pharaoh was killing all the boys. So Allah inspired the mother of Musa alayhi salatu was salam to put him into a little casket and to put him into the Nile. And Allah says, we will take care of him because had he become known that there was a children from there was a child from Banu Israel who was born, perhaps that child would have been slaughtered or executed by the Pharaoh as he was doing, tyrant ruler, and that was what he was doing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the wife or the mother of Musa alayhi salatu was salam to put this little baby into a little basket and put the basket in the water. And further downstream, who was walking? Fir'aun's wife was walking. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 8 of this beautiful surah, Surah Al-Qasas. The wife of the Pharaoh, the family of the Pharaoh, they picked up this lost property, meaning this baby, this basket, the baby who was in the basket, in order for that child to be for them an enemy and a point of sadness, a source of sadness. So they thought they are getting something good, but for the Pharaoh, it was not good. For the wife, it was good. For the Pharaoh himself, Allah is saying, we let him pick up something that would become in the future a means of regret for him. Now, pause for a moment. My brothers and sisters, sometimes we think we've achieved something big, but through that very thing, our destruction is written. What happens? A person purchases a new car. They're absolutely happy. May Allah safeguard us. This may have happened to some of us. May Allah grant us Jannatul Firdaus. But little did they know they were going to be having a major car accident with that vehicle and perhaps break limbs, perhaps even the loss of life. How? That was all in Allah's hands. But when we got it, we were so excited. This is what happened here to the Pharaoh. So let's save ourselves by thanking Allah. When you have something good, give out a sadaqah, give out a charity to praise Allah, to thank Him. Ya Allah, you've blessed me with this. Read two rakaat of salah to thank Allah. Thank Him in various other ways. Become obedient to Allah. Not like the Pharaoh. We've got goodness. We've got Allah has bestowed us with so much more and we are not thankful. We forget about Allah. We don't even fulfill our salah. That thing will not be a gift. It will actually be a punishment. How many people Allah gives them money to punish them with the money. How many people Allah gives them children for those children to be a means of their depression on earth because they've turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is all the plan of Allah. We need to be humble because you never know. You know, some people pick on the children of others, not realizing that perhaps their children might set a bad example that is even worse than these. So be careful. Don't throw stones when you are in a glass house. Remember that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. My brothers, my sisters, the point I'm raising is the Pharaoh had picked something up. His wife was excited. Finally, we've got a child. And Allah says they did not know what was coming. So the lesson we learn from this is definitely that whenever we have achieved goodness, we need to relate it to Allah. We need to engage in tawbah so that we are saved from it becoming a means of our regret. Amin, amin. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, on the other hand, the mother of 
Musa alayhi salatu was salam was indeed worried and concerned. And she was worried and concerned. She was praying to Allah. She knew from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he would take care of the child. But she did not know the plan was that this child would end up in the house of the Pharaoh who was actually doing all the executing himself. And he was so tempted to do it had it not been for his wife to have pleaded with him to leave the child that this child is actually innocent. He would have executed that child too. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives good news to all those who have been separated from their children. Whatever reason, whatever the circumstances are, if you've been separated from your children, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will return those children to you. Keep on calling out to Allah. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Keep on being sane, normal. Do not do things that would result in a disaster or a bigger problem. You have a problem, keep it there, try and make it small, but don't make it bigger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to address the matters that we are facing on earth today in the best possible way so that we can resolve them and we don't create bigger problems out of what we already have. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 13 of Surah Al-Qasas, which is the 28th Surah of the Quran, فَرَدَدْنَاهُ إِلَىٰ أُمِّهِ So we returned him to his mother. How did Allah return him to his mother? It was a miracle. It was Allah's decision. Allah decided that we are going to return him in a unique way. He refused to suckle from anyone. He refused to drink from any woman. And until they found the mother. When they found the mother, they had to call her. They had to pay her in order to come and take care of her own child. Look at the honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave such a woman for her patience. And Allah says, three reasons that we returned this child to the mother. Three reasons. Number one, so that her eyes can be cooled. So that she can have the coolness of her eyes. And so that she will not be sad. So that her eyes will be cooled and so that she will not be sad. And so that she can know for certain that the promise of Allah is the truth. How many of us, we know that Allah has promised us things, but we are impatient. This goes back to the point we raised a few moments ago. The impatience when we call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, we returned him to the mother so that she could have the coolness of her eyes and so that her sadness could go and so that she would know that the promise of Allah is definitely the truth. But Allah says, وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But a lot of them do not know. A lot of them do not know. Anyway, this was part of the story of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. The reason why I made mention of this is my brothers and sisters, we become depressed because we don't trust Allah. If you trust Allah, you will save yourself from depression. If you lay your conviction and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know that he will help you and he will solve your problem, then you will protect yourself from depression and stress and so on. I tell you another very interesting point. When we lay our trust in Allah and we ask Allah to do what is best for us, we must then be convinced that whatever has happened is actually the best thing that could have happened for us, whether we understand it or we don't understand it. Take a look sometimes at what's going on across the globe. There are so many bad things happening. My brothers and sisters, we must pray for the globe. The confusion across the globe at the moment is such that wallahi, we as Muslimin feel so let down. We feel so helpless, but we know that Allah has a plan. So whatever is happening sometimes, what is it resulting in? Yes, there might be people who are looking at Muslims with the eye of suspicion. But I promise you there are so many people entering the fold of Islam as a result of the awareness that is being created because of what's going on. People are wondering, I know so many Muslims, is this what they're all about? Let me read. So once they start reading and they start seeing for themselves, they turn to Islam. So wasn't that a point of mercy for them? Subhanallah. This is why we say, Sometimes that which appears like it is harmful is actually beneficial. It brings benefit, but we don't realize. This is why I say, save yourselves from depression by believing that once you've made a dua to Allah to do the best thing, whatever happened is actually the best. It's the best for me, my dunya and my akhirah. 
You see, when we make a dua of istikhara, what do we say? Istikhara means to seek the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say, oh Allah, if this is good for me and my deen and my dunya and my akhirah and my future and so on, my life, then make it easy for me, let me have it. And if it is not good for me, my life, my, my living, my religion, my future, then keep it away from me and take it away from me. When Allah takes it away from us, we become upset. We say, Ya Allah, you took this away from me. Allah says, but didn't you make the dua to say if it is bad for me, take it away from me? We know it's bad for you. You think it's good for you. So we took it away from you based on your dua and now you're complaining to us that you took it away from me. Subhanallah, this is man. Man is so short-sighted. He doesn't realize that Allah is the knower of the unseen. Allah knows absolutely everything. If you were to ask him and you have a good relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you really think that he's going to let you down? This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why here Allah returns the child. And after a certain time, the child grew up in this beautiful home with excellent food and lovely luxury home. Imagine the home of the Pharaoh, subhanallah. And after some time, the strong man came out into the city one of the days and there were people fighting. And as a result of this fighting, do you know what happened? Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. He looked forward. He took a step forward. He tried to see what the problem was. He realized that the problem was created by a certain gentleman and he was being aggressive against another. And so Musa alayhi salatu wasalam fisted this man, one fist. As a result of this fist, listen to what Allah says, verse number 15 of the same surah, Surah Al-Qasas. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam fisted him. One wax, you know, wax is a solid shot. And Allah says, Qada alayhi. The man died as a result of the one blow. He died. And immediately, Musa alayhi salatu was salam, he did not try to justify anything. He did not say he was wrong, uh, he was right. He did not say that he was, uh, you know, something happened and therefore this and that. No justification, no ifs and buts. He says, Hada min amali shaytan. This is indeed. The handiwork of the devil. I did not intend to do this. This is the handiwork of the devil. <inaudible> Indeed, he is a clear misguider. Shaitan misguides. He's a clear misguider. That's verse number 15 of Surah Al Qasas. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us this is what happened with the Prophet Musa alayhi salam. And immediately he repented to Allah. You know what he says? Rabbi in. Oh my Rabb, I have indeed, I have indeed oppressed myself, so forgive me. I have wronged myself. What I did was very bad, so forgive me. What was the time span between this dua and the deed that happened? It was moments. Within a few moments, Musa alayhi salam says, Oh my Rabb, I've done wrong. Forgive me, Ya Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَغَفَرَ لَهُ So Allah has forgiven him. Allah forgave him. As a result of seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From this we learn something very interesting. Whenever you've done something wrong, save yourself from the punishment, the quick punishment that may come quickly by seeking immediate forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A true mu'min, when your good deed makes you happy and your bad deed makes you sad, that is a sign that you have iman. Because if a person does not believe in Allah, whether they do good or bad, they will carry on living. But when someone does bad and it makes them feel sad and regret, it's a sign that you have a Lord that you are answerable to. That's why you are feeling sad. You would never feel sad if you were not believing. You didn't have a Lord to answer to. Why would you feel sad? Go and perpetrate all the sins on earth. You'll feel proud about it. People brag about the sins because they don't believe in the hereafter. But a true believer will never brag about his sins. When a sin is committed, he will say, Oh Allah, forgive me. I fear the day I'm going to die. I fear the day I'm going to be alone in my grave. I fear the darkness of that grave. And I fear what might happen in it. And I fear the day of resurrection. And I fear the day of judgment. And I fear whether I'm going to go into heaven or hell. That's a true believer. So therefore, as soon as you commit a sin, save yourselves. All the tension of the future by seeking forgiveness immediately. Someone did something wrong, immediately do something good. The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, when you've done something bad, do something good after it, it will wipe the bad out. Subhanallah. You do a lot of good deeds. 
then inshallah your bad deeds will be wiped out. If there are minor sins, they will be wiped out just like that. And if there are major sins, you need to seek the forgiveness of Allah specifically for that particular sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. So this is something that really is a point to ponder over, something that we need to reflect and to, inshallah, inculcate within our own habits and in our own lives, inshallah, that we seek the forgiveness of Allah constantly and we try and become more conscious of what we're doing. I want to move on to something again from the story of Musa alayhi salatu was salam that is also extremely interesting. So Musa alayhi salam, after having killed this man and after having sought the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Pharaoh realized that this is a good time to get rid of this man. So he started hunting for this man. So someone came to him and told him, you know, you're being sought after. It's best that you leave the city. So he decided to leave the city. When he decided to leave the city, he made a dua to Allah. This dua was very interesting. He calls out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide him to the straight path. Ihdini sawa as sabil. Guide me to the straightest of paths. And he arrived in a place known as Madian. As he was seated, he noticed people. And they were all shepherds trying to quench the thirst of their flock. And he noticed two ladies sitting in the back with a, with a flock of sheep. And he asked them, what's wrong? Why are you not uh, going forward to the water? They said, well, we will wait for all these shepherds who are males to go away. Then we will go. So he decided to take it upon himself to help. Look at the benefit of helping people. These are strangers. He doesn't even know who they are. He didn't ask them anything. He is a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not ask them anything. At that point, he didn't, had not yet received the Nubuwa. But he was already prepared for Nubuwa by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So... This young man comes, he offers assistance with all respect to these females. No ulterior motives whatsoever. And what did he do? He took the flock and he helped them to drink. And he gave these women back the flock and they arrived home very early. The father, an old man, asked what happened. They told him the story. So he sent them back. Now to pause for a moment. As soon as he had helped with this flock, he reclined, he was waiting, it's a city, he knows no one, and it's, some, it's a new place, and he says, he makes this dua, powerful dua. Inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. He says, oh my Rabb, oh my Rabb. This is verse number 24 of Surat Al-Qasas. Powerful dua, we should learn it and memorize it. Inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. Oh my Rabb, I am in desperate need for any goodness that you send in my direction. I am in desperate need for any goodness that you send in my direction. This is the dua of Musa alayhi salam. His life changed as a result of that dua. His entire life changed as a result of that dua. What was the dua? Oh Allah. I am in desperate need of any goodness that you are sending in my direction. Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when that happened, one of the girls came and she says, my father is calling you. Subhanallah. My father is calling you. Why? in order to recompense you for the goodness that you showed us. He walked back to where the father was. It turned out he was Shu'aib alayhi salam according to the narrations. And the way he walked showed that he was very, very respectful. He had lowered his gaze. He was an honorable man. He was filled with humbleness, dignity, good character, good conduct and so on. This was Sh the man that was now going towards Shu'aib alayhi salam when he got there. Allah says, فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُ وَقَصَّ عَلَيْهِ الْقَصَصِ قَالَ لَا تَخَفْ نَجَوْتَ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ When he got there and he narrated his story, he was told, Don't worry, you have been saved from the people who are oppressive. So that was a very, very big answer to the dua. But that was not the only answer. Inshallah, tomorrow we will see how Musa alayhi salatu was salam, how Allah opened his doors even further such that he ended up getting married. And his wife came from one of those who actually were helped 
that day when he was stuck in Madian and when he reclined and he noticed all these people and the flock of sheep that, were, that he had taken in order to help quench the thirst of, it's amazing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened his doors. My brothers and sisters, let's learn to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. Barakallahu feekum, inshallah, until we meet again. Aqulu qawli hadha, wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahu bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.